In this lesson, we're going to have a look at the measures of central tendency that we've looked at so far. That's the mean and the mode and the median. And the question we've got to ask is, which measure is the most appropriate in any particular given situation? Now, they've given an answer here that the answer is that there is no general rule which we can use. And it depends on the nature of the data and so on. So what you've got to look at is each situation on their own. But we're going to have a look at some of the properties that might help you make decisions in this area. All right, so let's have a look at the first example. What we've got here are one, two, three sets of scores and we've got to find the mode of the scores. So we've done this for you, so we're going to do this fairly quickly. The mode for the scores are 16. In this particular case, number 2, there are, there's no mode at all, no number that is more frequent than any other. And in this one here, it's 26. So the question is, to discuss the relative merits of these different modes. Now, in this particular case, it says 16 occurs the most often, and there it is there, you can see that it does. It's central, and it's pretty typical of all of these scores. Now, the average, it says, is 15.9. The median is 16. So you can basically say that, that the mode is a pretty good measure of central tendency. What about in number two? It says that this set of scores has no score. It should be no mode. Oh, I'm sorry, no score, which occurs more often than any other. So that means there is no mode. So, in this case, the mode is not a satisfactory measure of central tendency because it simply doesn't exist. So, it would be better to use the median, which is 17, or, sorry, the mean, which is 17, or the median, which is 16.5. What about the last one here? We've got scores here of 26 at the end, which make up a mode. And so, it occurs at one end of the set of data. So it's really not a central value at all. The mean is 20, the median 17. They're really good measures of central tendency, but the mode is right at the end, which gives us some information, but does not give us an idea of the middleness of the score. So the question you ask with any of these is, do they give us a good idea of central tendency? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It says, Note that these are case, that there are cases when the mode is important, even if it's not central. So what we can say here is if the number numbers are the sizes of hats sold by a shop, then the size which is sold most often would be very important, even though it's not a measure of the middleness or the average that is sold. Let's go on, and you can go over these notes yourself, so I'm just going to pinpoint a few things for you to notice. Now we're going to do the mean. Here are your scores, and it says that this one here is 6.2. So we'll write that in above it so we can use it, 6.2 for the mean. And for the mean here, it's 20.6. Now have a careful look at those scores, and you can see that one is a good measure of central tendency, and the other is not, and it's pretty obvious which is which. So in number one, it says the mean is central, and it's typical of the data, it's a good measure of centralness. So that's good. And it, it goes on to say the mode is 5, the median is 6, so it's all about the same. But in 2, 4 of the 5 scores are less than the mean. So it's not a central value, and therefore it's not a very good statement about the middleness of the scores. So here's the disadvantage of using the mean. And that is, it's affected by extremely large or extremely small values. These are called outliers. And in this case, 80 is the outlier. And it influences unfairly the concept of the average of these scores. It would be better to ignore the outlier, as it says here, ignore the outliers when calculating the mean. Now, it can be useful. But you'd have to question, where did that 80 come from? Why is it there? And that might be good just as an analysis. But certainly, that mean of 20 there is not a good indication of the middleness of overall of the scores. All right, so just one last thing then in this section. 
Or is it down here? Let's have a look. No, there it is. Just the one point that I didn't see here, sorry. Note that if we ignore the outlier, then the average becomes 5.75, which in that case is a good reflection of it. So you've got to just study the, the, um, the numbers. And the main question you've got to ask every time is, does this thing that I worked out, whether it be mean or mode or median, does it actually give me a good idea of a number that represents the middleness of those scores. If it doesn't, then you probably won't use it for giving that concept of middleness.